if you can remain standing um, for the Word of God this morning. And I always think that God's Word, word is worth standing for. And here's what it says. If you've got your Bibles or if you've got them on your app, open it up to 1 Kings 19, verse, 20, uh, verse 19 to 21. 1 Kings 19, 19 to 21. Here's what it says. It's, it says, So he departed from there, and he found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the twelfth. Then Elijah passed by him, and he threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen, and he ran after Elijah, and he said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again for what I have done to you. So Elijah turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them, and boiled their flesh using the ox, oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Anyone hungry this morning? Yeah. 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 And, uh, is anybody hungry this morning? Yes. Uh, I'm not talking about jolly bees. Just in case, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about KFC. I, I, I'm, I'm not talking about pork adobo, even though I'm hungry for pork adobo. But are you hungry this morning for God? Yeah. And if, if there's anything that I can encourage us all as we stand before God, is to declare, God, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for you. I need you. He fed. He cooked. He slaughtered. And they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. This is the word of the Lord. When you take a seat, will you do me a favor? Would you tap your neighbor, your neighbor beside you, neighbor behind you, neighbor in front of you, and tell them you're called for greater? You're called for greater. You're called for greater. You're called for greater. Man, I feel a little overwhelmed at the moment. I just feel that, man, the presence of God in this place is so tangible. I feel like he's restraining me. He's pulling the reins on me because normally I go 100 miles an hour. But God wants us to walk through the text this morning. God wants to walk through this environment this morning. He wants to walk down your aisle wherever you're sitting. And he wants to touch you. You see, if there's one thing that I've learned about God in my life, is this. God is is not interested, interested, interested in you being average. God is not in, interested in you being just good. God is not interested in you settling for better. God wants to bring you from ordinary to great. And... and I want you to catch the fullness of that. Because we get to choose, do we stay ordinary yeah. or do we push out yeah. and believe we're great? The testimony of Shara and Thais this morning is evidence yeah. of not ordinary people, yeah. but of the supernatural power of God in their life oh, yeah. for greater and you may sit there in your seat and say, yeah, it's good for them. But God wants you to have the same. You see that, that God is committed to you. When you first and foremost are committed to giving God your best. That's all he asks for. 
He doesn't want us just to give him 50%, 80%. He wants all of us and the best of us. In order to achieve this, you need to take a step of faith where you commit to a new season. And, and, and you know, we are celebrating 10 years, but as Pastor John declared, is that we're, 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 we're going to look back and we're going to celebrate what he's done, but more important, we're, we're going to step in for the season that's ahead. And it's going to be greater. Um, you see, it was in church that I found my purpose. Anybody find their purpose in church? Yeah. 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 You know, it, it was where um, I, I found my Lord and I heard the words, God loves you. And it radically changed my life. Because what I do declare this morning is I love his church. I am sold out for his church. And there is nothing, no better title than being a servant in the house of the Lord. I love meeting people who walk into church every Sunday for the first time and hearing their story. Church is full of people of all ages, of different culture backgrounds, yet church is not a club. You know, um, maybe you were like me um, before Christ and you went to the club. But one encounter, one encounter stopped all that. You see, church is not a club. Rather, it's a place where you belong. Where you become part of something bigger and greater. Church can be uh, different every week. New faces, old faces, but always the same presence of God. It's constant. But what I have to encourage us all this morning is let's not just do church, yet miss the intimacy of God. That we come with such a great expectation and desire to encounter him. And I hope that's what you've come. I hope you haven't come because of the awesome music. I hope you haven't come because of the spotlights. I hope you haven't come because of the notices and ETV. I hope that you've come for a word from God. You see, here's what Hebrews 13 says. Verse 21, it says, May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. You see, that's why we're called Equippers Church. Because we believe in the equipping of the saints. And may he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every yeah. great thing that is pleasing to him or glory to him forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You see, that's straight Bible. And we've just got to get Bible in us. Because there's a lot of noise out there that will distract and draw you away from the Bible, the truth. You see that every great thing God has put in you is pleasing to him. And this morning, I want us just to look a little deeper into the call of Elijah and to glean what we can learn more about the purpose and calling that God has for your life. When you reach out, and reach up to God. You know, I love what Tristan, you know, just unpack that song. And, um, you know, the first thing in the song, it's got, um, you know, he talked about the, the, the correlation, um, the connection to the lame man. And, um, you know, God, and, and, and it's true. God, God wants us to get up. Yeah. You know, the, it's, it's, it's very simple, you know, the, that in, in the song that they've written, that we, we worshipped, um, it's it's got get up, it's got lift up, lift up your voice. Amen. You know, so it's got get up, it's got look up, 
And then the last one has got lift up. Get up, look up, lift up. Are all in there. You're singing it, but actually prophetically, you're declaring over your own life. And, and I just want to say, you know, uh, Pastor John is looking for people who are willing to get up, look up, and lift up in our daily life, not just on a Sunday. So the problem when it comes to calling, it's not a vision problem. Rather, it's a hearing problem problem you see God is always speaking and could the issue be that we're just not listening so quickly I want to give you three thoughts um, that we can glean from our scripture today so the first one is greater creates room for God to interrupt our normal one king, so he departed from there, and he found Elijah, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. Everyone say plowing. plowing. That's six people said that then. Okay, everyone say plowing. plowing. There we go, there we go, there we go. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he was in the 12th. Then Elijah passed by him, and he threw his mantle on him. Now, if you don't know who Elijah is, Elijah is the prophet that God called to be the voice into Israel, uh, into the Israelites who were rebelling against God. And so it was not an easy task. It was not an easy calling. Yet Elijah stepped up and he, and he battled on behalf of the Lord. And, and here we find now, uh, by the time we get to chapter 19, you know, the things that Elijah has done is just incredible. He's taken on 420 um, prophets of Baal. Who, who is idol worship. So he takes them on and he calls on the name of the Lord and, and they spend all day calling on their God and, and they're calling. He says, oh, maybe he's in the toilet. Oh, keep calling. Oh, ma 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 maybe he's having a nap. Keep calling him. Nothing. And then Elijah steps up, calls on the name of the Lord. Fire comes down and the birds are sacrificed. So, so he, he believes in supernatural stuff. He's like, yeah, bring it. And I, I think that we allow the enemy... Too much territory. We, you know, he, 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 well, you know, rather than listening um, to, to the, the word of the Lord, rather than listening to what God's talking to you about, what happens is the enemy puts fear in you and fear blocks your ears. You know, have you ever been um, to, to um, uh, somewhere where it's noisy and you've got to put, uh, you know, earmuffs on or you've got to put earplugs in? Um, for safety to protect your ears. Well, well, basically what the enemy does is he puts his fingers in your ears. And then fear comes in. But he, here Elijah is now, when we, when, when we get to chapter 19, we find out that Elijah is now on the run. He, he is afraid for his life. So much so that he's gone out to the desert, he's sat under a tree, and he's declared over his own life, says, um, I'm, I'm going to die. So, fire comes down, burns up the bull, sucks up all the water around the bull, and now he's on the run because of one woman, and her name was Jezebel. Yeah. See, it only takes one person to rob you of your calling. So, I just want to remind you, who are the people that surround you? And, and are they going to draw the, the gift and the call of God in your life? Or are they just going to push it down and, and suppress it? Because it only takes one person that says, oh, you can't do that. Who do you think you are? In three days, you're going to die. And now he's on the run. And... He runs into the desert and he prays for God to take his life. And he has this encounter with God. In the midst of this encounter, God first sends a great, powerful wind. Then God sends an earthquake. Then God sends a mighty fire. But finally came a whisper. If you 
walk with God, upright, hungry, open to God each and every day of your life, serving him faithfully, giving to him faithfully, you will hear the whispers of heaven. I don't know. I think that we as Christians are surrounded by noise. Yeah, yeah. yeah we come into church, and man, our know, church is noisy. But it's noisy for God. Yeah. You know, because we're showing our gratitude. Yeah. We're, we're showing our thanksgiving to God. And so here's Elijah, and in the midst of the whispers that God gives Elijah, a special assignment finds Elijah, Elijah, and he anoints him. And when he finally found him, he was not in the school of the prophets. He was not in Bible college. He was not serving a ministry in his local church. Rather, he finds him in a field plowing. You see, when God... When, he, when God has a special assignment, then he will find you in a special place. Wow. I don't know about when, where you were when God found you. For me, it was in a boys' school, in an auditorium that a church was using. Maybe it's for you, it was in this theatre. Maybe it was in another theatre. Maybe it was out, out, out in the village where, you, where you're living in, through an outreach or through an e-community. Wherever God locates us, it's because he's got a special assignment and he uses a special place. And we think that, oh man, we have to be in the Holy of Holies. No. He'll meet you right where you're at. You see, um, he had 12 sets of oxen that were required to turn soil. It was hard work and long days of manual labor. Elijah's parents would have had to be wealthy, to own 12 sets of oxen. He was from a well-to-do family, and his future looked amazing. He would inherit the farm. He would inherit the land. He would inherit the oxen. Yet while he's plowing, while he's conducting his daily duties, God interrupts his life through Elijah the prophet. When you give room for God to interrupt your life, you see, you look different. You talk different. You sound different. Just check your neighbor and tell them you look different. You look different. Now, Sarah, as a 17-year-old, she still looks She looks it's like she's 18 now. You know, she, you know, she looks slightly different. But how, why, how come Filipinos always keep their age? <laughs> you know, you, you, you guys all, you know, like I, I see you every year, and it's like you never get older. Hey, hey, and I, I, just want, I just want to remind you, it's not because of something that you do. It's because favor's got you. That's the favor of God. Anybody like looking young? Yeah, yeah, that's right, because you're young at heart. That's right. So Elijah was going about his daily duty, yet God interrupted his ordinary to promote him into greater. Greater anointing, greater authority, greater influence. Don't settle for ordinary. Rather, create room in your heart and life for God to interrupt your current season and to release you into the greatest season yet. Somebody say greater. Somebody shout greater. Greater creates room for God to interrupt our normal. Number two, greater challenges us to maximize the moment. Here it goes. Verse 20. Elijah left the oxen standing there, and he ran. You know, there's something really prophetic um, when, when you're a runner for the Lord. 
you know, the, 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 uh, we were part of a ministry that we used to um, connect in with every Friday night when, when we got saved. And it was called the Forerunners. And, and, and God's looking for people who know how to run. Because there are moments when God says, wait. And then there's times that God says, run. And you see, he ran after Elijah and he said to him, first let me go kiss my mother and father goodbye and then I will go with you. Elijah replied, go on back, but think about what I have done to you. When God calls you, he not only gives you a special assignment, but he calls you in a special place. Elijah throws the mantle, his prophet coat, onto Elijah in a special place. Elijah's calling is not on the mountain tops. It's not in the temple. Rather, his calling is on a farm that has become a special place. I don't know for you, but for me, God was real in my life because I had this encounter. God healed me. He, he, he delivered me from my sinful life. He healed my family. He healed my marriage. And it all take, took place in a special place. You see, we see Elijah throw his mantle, which is like a, it's, it's like a coat. So he throws his coat on Elijah who is plowing. Then he keeps on walking. And because it takes Elijah time to stop the oxen from plowing, we read that without a prophetic word, Elijah runs. So when you think about prophecy, prophecy is all about a declaration. It's all about a word that God has spoken through the prophets. And I, and I love the gift that Pastor John and, and Pastor Niles, you know, they're, they're a killer team. You guys have got amazing pastors. Yeah, yeah. Can we give them a hand? Come on, yeah. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it was like a setup right from get go um, with, with uh, Pastor John and Niles and with us, uh, Ursh and I. It, it was like we just became family instantly. Um, and we've done some crazy things. <laughs> there, there's no limit to what we'll do. We'll do crazy things. And that's what God's looking for, church, that is willing to do crazy stuff. It's to, it's to go out and climb a mountain. It's to go out and build a school. It's, it's to eat frog. That's, that's what he did. It's to eat blue. That's what he made me do. It's to go and eat lizard. That's what he made me do. And I just said yes all the time because we're just crazy. But you see, um, his... Here's, here's the thing. Um, he goes past him without a prophetic word, throws, throws the mantle, and then Elijah runs. And, and I have seen and heard many people get a prophetic word spoken over their life, and all they've done is sit on it. They have doubted not only the word, but also their own insecurity to believe God for that word. And, and so I, I just... I just get a sense that today God has spoken prophetically over a number of you that are here in this auditorium that are sitting in their seats, and you've received the word from God, but you've been sitting on it. And it's time now to activate that word. You see, um, this was not the case for Elijah. He throws the mantle. He's got a pull on the leads of the of the plow of the, the oxen who are pulling the plow and it takes a bit to stop it. But what we read is his response was immediate. Not a word. You see God's gonna speak to you in so many different ways. You see God, God God's not a God of, of you know, ordinary, yeah. where, we, where, where we have to go and get a word from the pastor. You know what? In your, in your, in your small groups, God's going to speak prophetically through your, 
Yeah, now, now every every e group leader, you are anointed, you are called, and you need to start prophesying. And sometimes it's just a conversation, and in that conversation, there's just one word, and immediately things change. So expect the immediate. There was no time that he took to pray. He didn't say, oh, let me just pray about that. And did nothing. No, there was no time for that. He just ran. Elijah just ran after Elijah. There was a spiritual transaction that not only touched Elijah's heart, but it also transformed Elijah's mind of what had just taken place in this one single action. The moment of Elijah's anointing happens not with the pouring of oil, but rather with the throwing of a cloak. Too many Christians are waiting on a word and sitting on their gift. When God has a problem, he looks for a person to be the answer to their solution. You all have been called and gifted for a problem. But you're too focused on your problem rather than what God wants to use you in someone else's life. When God has a problem, he anoints a person for the problem. God anointed David for the Philistine problem. Moses for the Egyptian problem. Esther for the Haman problem. Paul for the religious problem. This young lady for the bike problem. Yeah. <laughs> For the religious problem, Jesus for the sin problem. He always assigns a person for a problem. So what's the problem that's around you that God's called you to resolve? Israel was in a rebellion against God, and now he was calling and anointing Elijah for the problem. What's the problem you are seeing before you that God is calling you to run into. The big question is, are you willing to commit no matter what? Matthew 19, this is what it says. A rich young ruler, Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor. Because the poor problem, he, this man, this young, young, rich young ruler could solve. And, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. But when the man heard this, he went away sad. There was a problem that Jesus spoke right down to him. And he was the answer to the problem because he had the resources to the problem. Rather than following, he left. You see, um, could we be twice the size if we just went out and fixed problems? You've got the resources. God's called you to do it. Yeah. All you have to do is trust God. You don't have to figure it all out. You say, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how this is going to work, but use me. And that's what he was doing. You see, there will, there will be moments in your life where God will throw the mantle on you. That is, is confirmation to move you into greater. Move you into purpose, move you into greater season in your life. Elijah ran after Elijah, then he ran home, kissed his parents, goodbye, then left. You see, he was willing to walk away from his inheritance. He was willing to step out and trust God that this calling on his life, that was what he, he was handed a mantle, and because he, there was a mantle on him, he received it, and he believed it, and he left. And the problem is, is that we're not willing to walk away. Walk away from our great job. Walk away from our, our lovely home. Walk away from our nice warm bed. Is God calling you to the poor? When we got called to the U.S., God called us to Denver, Colorado to work with the homeless. We sold everything. Because with God, there is no plan B. 
And now because I thought, well, if we let's just rent our house out just in case, we, just in case it doesn't work, then we've all, we can always come home. We'll have our home. We'll have our TVs. We'll, we'll have our bedrooms. We'll have our, our vehicles. Now we sold the lot because there's only plan A, and that's God's plan. And, and, and I want to yeah, build your faith because that's what Pastor John and Niles need. He wants a church of faith-believing people who want and believe for greater. Greater in your life is with God, not without. You see, Elijah ran after Elijah and he ran home, kissed his parents goodbye, and he left. That's crazy. All his inheritance, he walked away from it. Because there was a special assignment on his life. Matthew 19, 29, here's what it says. And anyone who has left houses, or see this, 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 yeah. this scripture yeah. was the foundational scripture that God spoke to me about everything that we did. See, any anyone. Say everyone say anyone. 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 Everyone say anyone. anyone. That means you and me. If anyone yeah. who has left houses or brothers or sisters, or father or mother, or wife or children, or fields, for my sake, will receive what? Wow. Not tenfold, wow. not twentyfold, wow. but a hundredfold. A yeah. hundred times as much and will inherit eternal wow. life. That's what I wanted. That's what I believed for. That's what I still walk in. Is that no matter where God calls me, yeah. I'm never short. I'm never lacking. Yeah. It's because of this. God, I receive my hundred times. I receive my hundredfold. I receive eternal life. You know, there's nothing else. What else do we need? See, we moved halfway around the world because there was a moment that we had with God where he was calling us to nations. And now look what we're doing. We're here with you. Amen. Amen. Not because I'm a good preacher. Really, I'm not. Yeah. I'm just an ordinary guy who's been touched by supernatural Amen. power of God Amen. in my life. Yeah. I'm no different to you. But we're all gifted. What are you doing with your gift? So number one, purpose allows God to interrupt our normal. Number two, purpose challenges us to maximize the moments. And last one, greater commits to burning the plow to get the promise. Here we have Elijah who commits to killing the cows and burning the plow. When Elijah slaughters the oxen that had previously provided for his livelihood, he makes a powerful statement of vocational commitment. Elijah's calling required a huge sacrifice. The cost to follow was significant and the price to pay. For Elijah, there, for Elijah, there was no going back to his former way of life. If you want to get to your future, you've got to let go of your past. And to ensure it happens, he slaughtered all 12 sets of oxen. And I just get this picture of Elijah's parents sitting in the lounge. They're sitting in the lounge and they're watching, you know, they're, they're, they're watching Netflix. And they're watching Netflix and I can hear Elijah's mum saying, Honey, what's that smell? Can you smell something cooking? And then the father, his dad gets up pulls the curtains, looks outside, and sees all the oxen on fire. Not only just the oxen, but now he's burning all the equipment that was attached to those oxen. You see, if you really want to follow God, you've got to be willing to burn your plow and run after God. You see, compared to the rich young ruler, Elijah was all in. His heart was all in. He had a future in farming, but that wasn't God's purpose or plan for his life. God's plan is always better than right. any plan right. you can dream right. up. 
Isaiah 55 says, uh, my God said, my ways are not your ways. My plans are not your ways. As high as the heavens are from the earth are my thoughts and my ways. We've got to be willing to go all in on God and align to God's plan for your life. Amen. Amen. No matter what it is. And I'm not saying that, you know, today go home, burn your house. <laughs> I'm not saying go back out in the car park and set it on fire, right? I'm not saying that. So don't say Pastor B told me to light my fire, light this fire in my house. No, no. What, what I'm saying is start, start making steps towards. Start growing up, no longer needing, no longer eat, uh, um, drinking milk, but you're into meat. And see, here's the biggest barbecue that was happening on this day. Now, Elijah, he made a barbecue. He cooked the best beef. You know, it was filet mignon. Uh, you know, I can see there was onions and there was garlic and some soy sauce. Oh, man, he was making, he was making bull a double. That's what he was doing. And, and you know why? Because after he had done it, he fed the people. And you see, every time we come on Sunday, God cooks up a huge meal for us, we get to, and we get to eat from the Word of God, and we never go home hungry. Even though we'll still go out for lunch, Jay Pastor, Jay Pastor John, right, right, right. I'll, I'll force myself. You see, what's the plow in your life God needs you to kill today? In order to take hold of what He's calling you into. It's a great question. What's the plow that God wants you to destroy in order for you to step in to your future and your call of God on your life? You see, here's some of the plows that I burnt when I invited Jesus into my life. The biggest one was the plow of pride. It was a big one for me. 20 years in the army, I would say boo. And that drop. Because I had authority and power because of rank. When I came into the church, no one listened to me. And I realized that for 20 years, pride had just built up in my life. And so the first thing I had to do was burn the plow of pride. I had to burn the plow of addictions. Yep. I was a drug addict. I hid it every day. I was addicted, and yet one moment with Christ, I burnt that plow. I burnt the plow of anger. You know, maybe these plows are also your plows. And God brought me halfway around the world to help you burn some plows today. The plow of anger. The plow of selfishness. When I gave my first tithe, I was so grateful that God had given me a second chance. When I gave my money to God, I burnt the plow in my life of stinginess, of selfishness, because I'm, I stand before you today so thankful for all that God has done in my Amen. life, Amen. that he gave me a second chance Amen. because God has been so faithful and generous to me. For three years living in Denver and serving the homeless and the poor, we couldn't work. We were provided with a stipend of $100 a month. Not once did we lack for anything. The food we gave the homeless became our food. We ate, our family ate from the food bank. We never went hungry. Our kids used to be excited about going shopping in the food bank. You know how quickly God changes your perspective on life. 
that we were humble enough to what the people on the street were eating. We ate. And it wasn't because I didn't have experience. You know, I left a multi-million dollar company. I walked away from a six-figure job to eat food from a food bank. And I loved it. You see, just God provided for us. We needed accommodation. God provided for us. Church, can I encourage when you trust God with your finances, God will always provide your daily bread. And and here's the challenge for us, is that we've got to get greater, but we've got to be willing to sacrifice for it. No matter what the plough may represent in your life today, I feel led this morning to lead you in a plough burning prayer. Amen, amen. But not only did Elijah kill the cow and burn the plough, we are told that he arose and followed. But he followed him not as a leader, not as a peer, not as a prophet. Rather, he followed him as a servant. Matthew 20, 26, it says this, Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. How many want greater and are willing to start as a servant? And whatever you're doing right now in church, we need you. Because every week we're going to have some plow burning Sundays. We're going to see people respond to the gospel. They're going to walk away from their old life and they're going to step into the new. And maybe that's you this morning. Maybe that's you. Maybe maybe this word is, is for you because of where God's located you. And he's located you right here in Ayala, in the mall, in a theater, in a picture theater that has been sanctified and set apart for God's presence. And you're here today. On this day, the 27th of October, 2024, on this day is going to be a special day for you. Because on this day, you're going to burn a plow. This day, you're going to kill the cow. On this day, you're going to give your heart to Christ. And you're going to go all in with him. And so right now, can I ask you to stand? And I'm, I'm going to invite Pastor John. He's going to come up. He's going to say a few things. And, um, and I know that, that this, is, this is where we collaborate um, in such a powerful way together. We, we, we catch each other. We get each other. We serve each other. Uh, but firstly, is, is um, if 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 you've got a cow in your life that you want to burn today, right where you're standing, if I can ask right around this auditorium, if you could just close your eyes and bow your head, because I, I, I I'm asking you to do that because I don't want you to be distract, distracted by the person to your left or right. I don't I don't want you to be in fear or that someone will see your hand and think something less of you. No. This is just between you and God. God knows it already. He he knows your secret. He knew my secret. And so right now, when every head bowed, every eyes closed, if if you would say, it must be, that's me. I've got a a plow that I need to burn today. And if that's you today, would you do me a favor and just lift your head? Just hold it right up. Well, hands going up all over the place. This is day that today we're, we're deciding to burn a sacred cow. Something that we haven't dealt with in our life. Something that just keeps niggling away at us and picking away at us. Uh, you know, it's like a it's like a sore that never heals. And yet God is going to heal that today. He, he's he's going to we're going to burn it and, and we're going to walk out of here free. 
so with every hand right there, if, if that's you, just lift your hand to God. Come on, just lift them up. Father, we thank you right now. Father, we declare the name of Jesus over every hand that is raised in this place. Father, we thank you that today we burn the sacred cow. We burn that thing that has never belonged. You never created us to carry it. You never created us to, to own it. You never cre created us, Lord, for it to be in our life. And today we burn it in Jesus' name. Lord, no longer will it have the power over our life. No longer will it restrain the call of God on my life. No longer will it, will it have its way. Lord, right now, you're releasing us into our future that is going to be greater. And we burn that flower. Father and Lord, we thank you, O oh God. Lord, today is a plow burning Sunday, Father. Today, Lord, we give it all to you, Lord. Whatever the plow represents in your life, I know right now as you lift all of it to Jesus, it's being burned right now. Any struggle that you have, any pain that you have, addiction, pain, pride, bitterness, offense. All you got to do is just give it to God. Right now, as you keep on lifting your hands, those people who are saying, Lord, burn this, Lord, burn this. All I can do, Lord, is give it all to you. And just give it all to God. And today, today is not just a plow burning Sunday. God wants to create a new story in you. It's not enough to plow, to burn the plow. But today, after that, Elijah, Elisha, follow Jesus. Here's the thing today. As we're going to sing the song, those people who are going to say, Lord, I have burned this plow, but I want to follow you today. As we sing this song, can you go out of your seat? And can you come here? And you just say, Lord, a new day for me. I want to follow you. Come, come, get out of your seat. And come here. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be shy. Here's the thing, church. Here's the thing. Napansin nyo kung paano tinawag ni Lord si Elijah? Ang ginawa ni Elijah, in Elijah is just the mountain. What he did is just it's just for a moment. A moment where you can't see anything. So that you will be reminded that your focus is only in God. And today, I just pray over you. That instead of sadness covering you, it should be the greater things that's covering you. I pray that today something God is about to anoint you and cover you with His goodness and His love. So our Today is not just a decision Sunday. Don't settle. Don't settle for your past decision. Today is a new day. So come on, can we just do it? If you are touched by the Lord and God is anointing, come on, join us here in the front. Get out of your seat. And let's have a revival today. Come, come and be anointed with the Lord in Jesus' name.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Sa lahat ng aking mga bisita, it's Jesus Christ that you need. Only Jesus saves. And if you're already here in the front, praise the Lord. But I don't want to lose this opportunity. Baka may bisita pa tayo na nandyan na nais tumanggap kay Jesus Christ. It's Jesus who can save. It's not religion that you need. It's Jesus. So if you are still there and you want to receive Jesus Christ, you can just lift your hand. You can come here so that I can pray for you. We can wait for you. Pero kung nandito na po kayo sa harap, praise God. Oh, there's more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, this first prayer is a prayer of accepting Jesus Christ. He is who you need. So kung bisita po kayo, can you just follow me in this prayer? This is a prayer of accepting Jesus Christ. And this is the prayer. You can follow me. Pwede po kayo sumunod sa panalangin ito. Panginoong Diyos, maraming salamat po na minahal mo ako kahit ako'y makasalanan. Salamat na mayroong pag-asa at bagong simula sa iyo. Panginoon, binubuksan ko ang aking puso at tinatanggap kita bilang aking Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Maraming salamat sa iyong biyaya, sa bagong simula, at sa kaligtasan, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen.